Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to another episode of the Back Office Show. Uh, by the way, I got this new Garmin watch. Um, I may or may not have released a video about it in unboxing, but it's died. It won't charge up, so I'm just running out its battery to see if it will happen to charge up when it's been fully discharged but i've already got an rma number and they're going to replace it so boohoo but i do like that watch i just ran with it this weekend i did 35 miles believe it or not and it was flawless apart from the fact it obviously blew out its charging circuit somehow now in a previous episode you might remember this it takes a pc power supply and it gives you these terminals where you can attach wires unfortunately it's not banana connectors but uh, at least they're still just sort of wire terminals and you can use it and you've got your minus 12 ground, plus 12 ground, five volts ground, 3v3 ground, and then you've got five volts on a USB and you've got a couple of uh, 12 volt uh, connectors and you've got a little on off switch. Now, I ordered something a while back and it's, I forgot about it actually, it was in this envelope and it uh, is for the Texas Instruments uh, 99.4A I ordered because that had a blown out power supply. Well, I say it had a blown out power supply. I can't test the power supply. It's a US model. Um, and it's also got a really weird um, wire. It's got a very weird power uh, adapter on it. So I thought, well, what I'm gonna do is just piggyback its internal power supply with this. And uh, then we'll be able to just power it up and get all the goodness off. And this is the perfect way of testing this unit. So what this is, is basically, I can't believe I paid like three pounds for this on eBay. Look at what you get. You get the actual power adapter and you get the uh, 12 volt wire lead with a nice little connector on it and a SATA cable. That is bonkers source. So the reason I got it anyway is that these units uh, emulate the power supply in an ATX um, case so that you do get all of the standard voltages, your minus 12, your ground, your plus 12, your plus 5, your plus 3v3 on a little tiny thing like that. And it's using, um, it's basically like a switch mode power supply and it's absolutely minuscule, isn't it? So it's no brainer that this is definitely a way to go. So I'm going to remove that because we're probably not going to need it anyway in this. And three pounds. Uh, okay, so first things first, we've got to figure out which end it plugs into and which way around. So it's going to be one of these ends. And realistically speaking, it can only fit in this way. So it doesn't have uh, some of the additional ATX uh, headers, but that's fine because it's not one of those types of power supply. So we don't have those, but I don't think we need them for this particular thing. So I'm gonna now get a power lead and hopefully it will fit. No, because that is particularly chunky looking. Hmm. So yeah, you might need to be aware of that. Let's uh, get the soldering iron on and I'll solder something straight onto this instead. Um, let's put it that way. Got a bit of wire here I happen to have from an earlier project, conveniently. So which one is the positive? So I've got the white stripe as the positive, that one. While well, my soldering iron again, I'm just gonna double check that last time to make sure the positive is the one on the outer edge of the PCB. So soldering iron's hot. Let's do this thing. Power supply is off. Uh, come on now, come on. Needing, needing a bit of coaxing. There we go. So uh, hmm, I might change the actual 12 volt connector though because that one did look a little bit annoying. But then I'll have to just see what power supplies I have locking around. Come on. Right, that's not great. It's not a great connection, but it's good enough for what we've got. So we've got bench power supply here. I'm going to turn it on, ramping it up to 12 volts. Contact, we're on. Oh, you can see that little blue light has uh, illuminated, so that's good. So we're going to put our voltmeter on volts and I'm going to go from ground to 12 volts immediately. We're not seeing anything because we haven't switched it on. Boom, on. Oh look, and all these LEDs actually have come on and that one's a little bit dim there, but I wonder if that's, that's interesting, isn't it? 
So they obviously have slightly different resistors to give them the different levels of juice. And that's the 3v3 ones. A little bit on the edge, but let's see. Whoa, did you see that? Just putting our meter. Oh, I think there's a bad connection. That's what it is. Leave the soldering iron on. Let's touch that up in a second. So we definitely have a 3v3. If I push too hard, the LED goes out for some reason. Um, 5.2 volts. We have a 12 volt rail. And we should have a minus, minus 12 volts. Near enough. And then USB. So we do have a problem here with some flex on the board. Oh, what's warm? Am I imagining it? Maybe. These are warm. So, I think it could be that resistor. So let's just hit that with a bit of heat. So this thing's going to do just fine, isn't it? As long as it doesn't get too hot. What the heck is going on here? Right, going to turn off the power because this is going to need a little bit more effort than I was planning. So we've got some flux on there. Let's get in there. My dirty solder line, so filthy. That's weird, it's really not reacting. Not sure what kind of solder they use, but yeah, it took a lot of effort to get that one to uh, react. I think it's just the PCB. It's just sucking all the heat, you know, through these bloody things. So, yeah. All right, let's try these other contacts. Come on. There we go. All right, let's see. Oh, apparently I've done two laps. Don't know what I've done two laps of. Yay! Look, pushing it down, it's still on. So that's pretty marvellous, isn't it? I mean, we could do some tests at some point to see what the uh, kind of current handling capability is of this thing, but it's not getting too hot. It's drawing uh, 100 milliamps just sitting there powering all those LEDs. Knock off the LEDs, let's see what it's drawing. 32, 30, 30, 30, yeah, 30 milliamps there, and then boom. Working its way back up to 100. The funny thing is, as I just flick it to on, the power supply goes into current limit, which is two amps, so it does hit it hard. Um, just to continue a little bit more though about this particular thing though, it's nice because not only do you have obviously your USB, but these fuses here are really cool, so that if you, uh, do any nasty shorts you can um, see that right away. This whole thing would make quite a nice uh, device really in a 3D printed case. Um, shame about the lack of banana connectors but what I'd do is if I was mounting this inside a nice box I would look for some banana connectors and just solder them to the front of the enclosure and then just take them off but it's a really nice little tap and look at the power traces on the back. Yeah, they're going to be able to take a reasonable amount of current I should think. I'm not even sure how many a track like that is but it's, it's definitely a lot. This is interesting here there's a whole bunch of like these little uh, wires going through so it's basically punching it through to this other track here. There you go. So hope that's been of some use to you. Stay tuned for a future video where we get that TI-99 working with the aid of this and uh, we might uh, use something like this to figure out all the uh, pins. In fact, just before we go, you can easily get the pin out for a ATX power supply off the interwebs, but let's just, I'm gonna play with these pins here, they're easier to get to. So that's a 3v3, uh, minus 12 volts, zero, zero, which is ground, zero, 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 now you have to remember, by the way, 5.2, 5.2, and then on the bottom will be the 12. You have to remember, by the way, that if you're using this in a, in a project, there is one pin, which kind of escapes me now, but I'm looking at here. You see that one there? 
that pin has to be, I thought, think shorted to ground, which would be, uh, see that one, the fourth one from the left on the bottom row. So we can try that. That would be that pin. This pin. Did we say the one next to it might be ground? Yeah. Yes, it is. There we go. <laughs> so what you're going to need to do is short that to that. We could do that modification now, though, as a little uh, experiment, because we know we're going to have to do that anyway. And I'll do that because my soldering iron is not only on, but the circuit is also live. So we get some... What the heck is that tool? It's the worst tweezers I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. I haven't got them out, but I did order myself finally you'll be pleased to know a replacement set of possibly the best tweezers you can get in the world these are the ideal tech sm 116 sa swiss made ah oh, where have you been my old friend a oh, brand new one and with a tip protector oh yes these are exceptionally good guys i'm telling you for any work like this although i have to say this one does have a particularly big grabby jaw. I think, I'm pretty sure it's the same model as my previous one, but I think my previous one would have gripped that a bit tighter. Hmm, let's just check. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I think so. We'll have to, we'll have to wear that out a little bit, get it going properly. Right, so I'm gonna trim this U-shaped piece to be the right length. It's just basically a jumper. And then we're gonna zoom in while the camera is focusing, I'm going to get a better grip on this because, again, maybe I ordered the wrong tweezers. <laughs> and we're going to go from four along to the fifth along. That was That's the right one, but not enough solder. So I'm going to just get the old solder in there. You'll see those LEDs light up like a Christmas tree. And uh, you don't be able to see this one so good because it's underneath that plastic tab, but it's definitely there as you can see. Come on, take the heat. This is very reluctant to take solder. It's definitely got some nice built in heat sinking there because it's got so much metal and ground planes. Anyway, that's fine. So it means now my on-off switch will do nothing. That's always on, always chucking out the juice. As ever, thanks for watching.